Hey everyone, I'm Mariana, this is Impression Blend, and it is time for another monthly wrap-up. So today, I'm going to be talking about everything I watched in April. Before I get into this, if you are new to my channel, if you are just finding me now, I think you should consider subscribing if you enjoy movies, TV series, books. Since you clicked on this video, I'm assuming you do. I think you would really enjoy it here, so hit that subscribe button, and if you want to follow me on social media, I have all of those links in the info box below. Also, if you missed some of my previous wrap-ups, I will have a playlist linked for you right here and in the info box as well. All right, so let's start with the TV series I watched. And first of all, I finished season one of The Boys. Finally, I am on the hype train with everybody. Of course, I loved it and I cannot wait to see what happens in season two. If you don't know what this is about, the series is set in a world very similar to ours, except for superheroes exist. We, of course, as people, have made it a corporate event. They're essentially celebrities. They have PR teams. They have approved places where they get to go save people for maximum exposure and impact. It is a very, very messed up situation. It is dark. It is satirical. It is darkly funny. It makes fun of celebrity culture. It exposes how people are really not who you think they are and how they present themselves. It talks about the corporate culture and all of these things. It's an amazing, amazing series. Then you have have this other group of people who really dislike these superheroes, specifically led by one man. His name is Butcher, who is actually my favorite character. Him and Frenchie ended up being my favorite characters so far. But Butcher is really on a dark path and he hates the superheroes. We eventually find out why and what his goals are. And that's all I'm going to tell you about it, because if you haven't seen the series, you should come in as fresh as possible. You don't need this spoiled for you. From my perspective, I think it is just as great as people say it is. As I already mentioned, I think it's really funny and it's really smart. I am loving all of the satire and all the examination of how power corrupts people, as well as what makes people go from having good intentions to something quite a lot different. I also have to say the cast is absolutely fantastic and they really embody these characters. I couldn't imagine anyone else playing these roles. I love that they based these superheroes on existing superheroes from comics that we're familiar with. So you can definitely tell who is Superman, who is Aquaman, who's Wonder Woman, and so on. It's a lot of fun, and I, of course, enjoy the dark twist on all of this. The last thing I'm going to say about it is that I did not expect it to be as graphic as it ended up being, and I'm kind of into this. I love that they actually show violence the way it would look. It's not your kind of Marvel version of violence where nothing bad really happens and if it does it looks very tame and it's very much for dramatic effect No here if somebody dies, it's just it's right in your face and if it's a graphic death you're going to be seeing a lot of that. So I do like that they took that approach. If I were to rate season one, I would go for a nine out of 10. I really, really enjoyed it. And I cannot wait to get into season two. I'm going to be watching that next. And the second series that I finished in April is, of course, Shadow and Bone. Many of you have probably seen the review that I did. If you haven't seen it, it's a spoiler free review. You can watch it without being afraid that I'm going to ruin something for you. If you haven't seen the series yet, I will link it right here as well as in the info box for you to check it out. So I'm not going to talk much about it. Shadow and Bone is a fantasy series on Netflix that is based on a book series by Lee Bardugo, and it turned out a lot better than I thought it would. I went into this being a little bit skeptical, especially after the uneven experience that was The Witcher. I mean, some parts of The Witcher are a lot of fun, and then other parts of it are just 
questionable to say the least. So going into Shadow and Bone, I kept my expectations pretty low because I read the books and I knew this was going to be a complex fantasy world. They also brought in two different book series and mashed them together, so I didn't know how that was going to work out and I was so pleasantly surprised. I think it's one of the best fantasy series we have seen in a while and we do not get a lot of great fantasy TV series. So if that sounds interesting to you, absolutely give it a try. I think you're going to enjoy it. Check out my review for more details and for what you should expect from the setting of this world, but I ended up giving the first season of Shadow and Bone a 9 out of 10, and I cannot wait to, first of all, watch it again because I'm definitely going to be re-watching it sometime soon, but also for season 2, I am so so excited. As for what I'm watching right now, I am not currently in the middle of any series. I haven't started anything new, but the first thing I'm going to watch is going to be season two of The Boys, and that actually might be my only TV series for the month of May. If I do end up watching something else, it's most likely going to be Succession. As you can tell, I'm trying to catch up on things that I've missed out on because I don't watch a lot of TV series, but Succession has been something that I have been really, really wanting to watch and just haven't gotten around to it. I know I'm going to love it. I just know it. I have read enough about it to know that this is going to be entirely my thing. So if I do start something else, it's going to be Succession. If you have any suggestions for me, please leave them in the comments below. I need something more like devs, something more like the OA. I need a great sci-fi series in my life that's going to make me consider humanity and the meaning of life and all of those great things sci-fi can make you do. I know about The Expanse. I'm going to get there. I'm going to read the books first, I think, at least the first few books. But other than The Expanse, I need some recommendations. Finally, let's get into all of the movies that I watched in April. And as you can see, I haven't watched all that many because I ended up binging two TV shows. So it kind of looks like I haven't watched much, but I've been reading, I've been watching other things. So that is why this list is pretty short. And if you don't know what this is you're looking at right now, this is my Letterboxd account. This is essentially social media for film lovers, and I log everything I watch in here. So if you want to follow me, I am Impression Blend here, just as I am everywhere else on social media. I started the month of April with Voyagers. This was a screener I got to see a little bit ahead of time, and I was excited about this movie. The trailer for this looked pretty trippy, and the whole idea of Lord of the Flies in space could have been interesting, but as you can see by my rating, I was not a huge fan of this movie. I talk about why in my review that I did, so if you want to check that out for more details, I will of course have it linked for you, but I ended up giving this movie a 6 out of 10. Then I decided to catch up on one more Oscar nominated film because it was nominated for a few awards and the last Oscar nominated film that I caught up on was News of the World. Now, I am not a huge fan of westerns, and this is most definitely a western. It's about this guy played by Tom Hanks who finds a girl and decides to take her home to her family, even though she has been raised in a Native American environment for a while. And look, this movie looks gorgeous. I completely understand why it was nominated for cinematography, for production design, also sound score. I get it. It makes sense, but I just, I didn't love it. And it, for me personally, this wasn't too memorable. Of course, Tom Hanks does a fantastic job. Of course, if you love Westerns, you're probably going to enjoy it. But this just really wasn't my thing. I didn't really connect with it personally. And I didn't feel like they did anything extremely special that hasn't been done before. But it was a well-made film. So I ended up giving it a 7 out of 10. Then after persistent recommendations from a few of you guys, I decided to finally watch 
the empty man. I did not know what to expect and I didn't expect much because let's be real, the title of this film, absolutely generic, it makes you think of Slender Man, Boogeyman, whatever, Bye Bye Man, it's just, it's not very enticing. The poster really isn't much going on there. The trailer makes this movie look like, once again, just another run-of-the-mill boogeyman film. Some kids summoned a boogeyman and now they're all gonna die. It's not like I've seen that a million times before. But this movie is absolutely an underrated gem and I'm still considering making a video on it. It's just hard to speak about it without spoilers because most of the interesting stuff happens when you finally figure out what's going on in this film and what it's actually about. First of all, let me tell you, it's not about the kids summoning a boogeyman. That's part of the plot. However, it's about this guy who is investigating a disappearance of the daughter of a woman he is a friend of. And as this film goes on, he just goes down this rabbit hole that ends up somewhere you completely did not expect it to end up. It has some genuinely terrifying sequences, not jump scares. No, no, thankfully not those. But there's one particular sequence that takes place at night at this camp. If you've seen the movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I was genuinely terrified. I had chills watching that and even thinking about it just makes me uncomfortable. They did so well with the horror and dread. It is a bit of a slow burn, but it makes sense why this is a slow burn. I really liked where the story went. I thought they picked a very interesting path for it. Yeah, this is actually a very underrated horror film that I think way more people need to watch and just forget the trailer, forget the generic title. Just check this movie out. It is worth your time. It is very, very long. For a horror film being over two hours long, it's kind of pushing it, but it needs that runtime. I also find the story behind this film very interesting because the movie was just kind of dumped in theaters for I don't even know how many days it was in theaters because I honestly haven't heard of it until some of you started bringing it up. Apparently this came out last fall in 2020 really bad timing. I didn't even notice this movie was coming out. I had no idea it existed, so they did not market it very well. And apparently they did not even finish editing it properly because this is considered a rough cut of a film, which for a rough cut, this is really, really good. This feels like an extended cut of some film because there are definitely sequences in there that I could see being trimmed down to shorten that runtime a little bit. But I think they're all necessary and I think they're all interesting. Basically, what I'm trying to say is if you enjoy mystery horror and a bit of a slow burn mystery horror that's definitely worth it in the end, I think you should check out The Empty Man. I ended up giving this movie an 8 out of 10 and I'm officially on team recommend this movie to everyone until more people see it. After that, I got the chance to check out Stowaway a little bit early and I I had full intentions of filming a review for it, but I just didn't see a lot of interest for it online, so I changed my mind and I thought I would talk about it in this wrap-up instead, but I'm going to tell you right away, I think this movie is very underrated. I think it's a very interesting and very tense sci-fi thriller. Has the topic of survival in space been done before and been done really well before? Yes, absolutely, but I still think this movie is effective and I think sci-fi fans would enjoy it. Stowaway revolves around a small crew of three who are on a two-year mission to a colony on Mars. And obviously, as the title suggests, there is an unexpected complication. They discover a stowaway on their ship. Now, they do briefly mention in the movie why they can't just go back and take the person back to Earth. And as you can imagine, this creates a very complicated situation. This is a small ship as it is. And as other things come up, I'm trying to be vague here because this is a thriller, so it is plot driven, so I don't want to ruin anything. But things start coming up and it escalates into a very 
complicated, difficult situation and they have to make some hard decisions. This movie was written and directed by the guys behind Arctic. If you've heard of that one, this is also a very intense survival thriller starring Mads Mikkelsen. I think you should check it out if you haven't, if you like survival thrillers. And much like that film, Stowaway has to do with the man against nature situation. There really isn't a villain in here other than the circumstances that they're having to face and what that does to them as people and the kind of decisions they have to make. I always find setups like that interesting if there is a dilemma involved. And there are also some gorgeous space shots in this film. I was genuinely sad that I wasn't able to watch this on the big screen because I think this film was meant for the theater experience. But as of now, it is on Netflix and you can watch it there if you have a Netflix account. I ended up giving this film a 7 out of 10. I was kind of between a 7 and an 8 on this one because on one hand I found it incredibly effective, but I can't deny that this isn't incredibly original and that they didn't do all that much with the characters. A couple of characters get a little bit more development than others, but considering this is only a four-person cast, you would think we would get to know these people a lot better, and we don't. Anyways, I do think you should check this movie out if you're a fan of sci-fi thrillers. I think there is quite a bit to enjoy there. Next, I watched another sci-fi film, and that was The Midnight Sky. As you can tell, I am a little bit on a sci-fi kick over here. And The Midnight Sky, I have heard some awful reviews about. I've heard that it's slow and boring and that it doesn't come together and it's just not as deep as it pretends to be. And I guess I'm going to be in the minority here, but I thought this movie was pretty good. I understand the criticisms and I definitely found one portion of the story a lot more interesting than the other portion of the story. But for what it was, I thought it was very interesting. It's basically a post-apocalyptic situation and the Earth has become essentially uninhabitable. Everybody is leaving, trying to find some safe place to stay, even though it's pretty hopeless over there. And this man, played by George Clooney, decides to stay where he is because he is terminally ill, he has nothing to lose, and he's going to try to communicate to the spaceship that is looking for life on other planets. And so the two storylines we get is George Clooney and his whole situation on Earth, and then the perspective of people on the spaceship that is coming back home from the planet that they were exploring because they don't know what happened on Earth. Part of the issue for people here is that there is a plot twist that is fairly obvious from the very beginning. And I think people who guessed the plot twist very early on thought that that was very anticlimactic to keep that secret until the very end. But I think there is more to this film than the plot twist itself. There are implications for the lead character when it comes to that plot twist and what it means to him. There are thoughts about career and family and how all of that plays into one's life. I just, I thought it was interesting. I connected with it, I guess. And also it is a beautifully shot film, not just from the perspective of visual effects that are Oscar nominated visual effects for a reason, but also just cinematography. I found it interesting and I enjoyed it. So I think this movie is actually pretty underrated. I ended up giving it a seven out of 10. And I think maybe if you hated it the first time around and you thought that it wasn't what you wanted it to be, maybe you should give it another try. I know it's hard to give another try to a film that you hated, but I, I really think that this movie is underappreciated. Next up, I watched Await Further Instructions and it was awful. Now this is a movie, it's a sci-fi horror film 
that quite a few people have recommended to me as an underrated gem. And I'm sorry, I have to disagree. No amount of interesting premise could have saved this movie. The dialogue is god-awful. The acting is not great. The characters and the writing are just... It's bad. All of it is bad. I kind of hated this movie with a passion. The premise of it is that there are these people who are gathered at dinner and the TV starts giving them instructions. And so they're starting to follow them because they think something crazy is going on. They have been locked in this house from the outside. They can't leave. They can't communicate with anybody else. And that's kind of the setup of it. And it just... I think it made so little sense. Not like I didn't get what was going on. I just think the plot of it is ridiculous. And where it went towards the end is ridiculous. Sorry. If you like this movie, tell me why you love it so much. Because I thought it was really, really bad. Ended up giving it a 2 out of 10. Then another movie that I struggled with was Things Heard and Seen. This is a new thriller mystery horror film that just came out on Netflix and I was intrigued by it because it had some sort of haunted house plot going for it plus Amanda Seyfried is in it so I actually expected this to be pretty good. It ended up being so painfully average. Imagine a movie where family moves into a small town where the husband got a job at a university and the wife is kind of stuck at home and this old house is potentially haunted. We don't know where things are happening except for not much happens. This setup already very run-of-the-mill setup but imagine that really there isn't that much going on it's not that scary it's not that thrilling it's mostly a very average drama that's it for this movie it's very disappointing it has paper thin characters it doesn't have great writing it doesn't have great visuals there's not enough atmosphere to even make it be an interesting haunted house situation. So yeah, this movie, not worth your time. Not in my opinion. Even if you want to watch it because you're an Amanda Seyfried fan, it's just, I don't think it's worth your time. I ended up giving it a 5 out of 10 because it is painfully average. And to be honest, two days after watching it, I almost forgot this movie even existed. Then I decided to check out Dark Skies. I've also heard from a few people that this movie is underrated. It's a supernatural thriller from Blumhouse and unfortunately it is a very average supernatural thriller from Blumhouse. First of all, I've heard from people that this is a sci-fi thriller. There is a sci-fi element to it, but as far as the movie goes, it's pretty much just a, once again, a family and a house getting messed with. And there is a supernatural element to that. So that's kind of the story. And once again, painfully average. I honestly watched it mostly for J.K. Simmons because I thought, wow, J.K. Simmons in a horror movie, that's going to be at least entertaining. But it takes way too long to get to J.K. Simmons and J.K. Simmons is barely in this film. So if you're like me and you're considering watching this movie for him, don't bother. Just don't do it. It's not worth it. So considering his presence is very minor, what you're left with is a few decent scares. I mean, this is Blumhouse, so they can pull off a couple of scares per horror film but they're not really all that amazing either and the movie is just full of cliches and mediocre writing so ended up giving this a 4 out of 10 would not recommend. Exploring the Netflix sci-fi and thriller selection just has not been working out all that well for me in April so after this I was so pleasantly surprised when I watched Prospect. Now, Prospect is a hard sci-fi film, and I thought it was wonderful. Now, this is the definition 
of an underrated gem. I do understand why this film will not be for everybody. It is kind of a slow burn and sometimes it's a drama, sometimes it's a survival thriller. The pacing can be a little bit uneven, but generally it's a slow burn. Basically, this is a sci-fi western. Now, I know I just mentioned when I was talking about News of the World that I'm not a big fan of westerns, but when I see one that I like, I do end up really liking it. And this one has a sci-fi twist to it. So, yeah, I was a big fan. First of all, it looks absolutely gorgeous. The world that this movie creates, it's a different planet is so detailed and so distinct and so vivid. It just felt like a place that exists somewhere. And I was in love with the look of it. The technology looks very retro futuristic, which I always enjoy in sci-fi. The overall feel of it is very timeless because of it. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that I was a big fan of the aesthetics aspect of this film. The story itself, I've seen some people say that they were confused as far as what was going on and what the plot was. I didn't find that at all. I actually think the story is very straightforward, but it does throw some information at you without really setting you up for it, without explaining what certain things are. You're just thrown into this world, into this situation, and you figure it out as you go. I think if you're paying attention to the dialogue, you will not have any trouble following the story. The other thing is, I think some people might consider this to be a little bit overwritten because the language that is used, particularly the language that Pedro Pascal's character uses, is very literary. And I was 100% into that. I enjoy that type of stuff in movies, even though I do realize people don't really speak like that in regular life. But I feel like it's an artistic choice that... I generally enjoy it. And it felt like it fit his character and it fit this story and this setting. So I liked it, but I think some people might feel like this is a little bit too much. The last thing I will say is that the characters did feel like they could have used a little bit more work, but I feel like we got enough for these characters. So between the characters and the slightly uneven pacing, it's not a perfect film, but I was a really big fan of it and I would absolutely recommend it to sci-fi fans. Definitely going to be watching this one again. Ended up giving this one an eight out of 10 underrated gem status. Finally, the last thing I saw in April was Nobody. This is a film that came out very recently. It's an action movie that people compare to John Wick because there are some similarities in the premise of it. It's starring Bob Odenkirk. So it is interesting because you get to see this action film from the perspective of someone who is older than your traditional action hero. And this is directed by Ilya Neyshuler, who did Hardcore Henry. Now, I didn't love this film as much as I loved Hardcore Henry. And I know most people didn't love Hardcore Henry as much as I did. So maybe to some of you, nobody would be a better film. But for me, Hardcore Henry was just so much fun and so different and so insane as a concept that I was 100% on board with that film. This one was a bit more of a traditional action film that's just done really well and with a slightly different protagonist. But I think if you are into action movies and you want to see one that has some humor, that has some fun action sequences, that has a story you are going to be interested in following and a compelling protagonist, then you should absolutely check it out. I ended up giving Nobody a 7 out of 10. Definitely a very, very decent and entertaining action film. So that is it for everything I watched in April. Obviously, my TV series watching was a lot more successful than my movie watching. I would say my favorite thing that I watched, I'm looking at my letterbox right now, would definitely be Prospect. But as you can tell by my ratings, this is obviously not a month where I saw a lot of films that I was really, really into. Like the standouts here are Prospect and The Empty Man. And both of them are what I would consider to be underrated gems. So if you haven't seen those two, definitely check it out. 
also i think you should check out stowaway but i hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much to everyone for watching a special thank you to all of my patrons who are supporting me on patreon i know i've been a little bit quiet there for the past month i've been busy but i'm coming back and i'm going to talk to you guys a lot more an extra special thank you to the patrons whose names are on the screen right now thank you guys so much and thank you to everyone who made it to the end of this video and who watches my videos when i post them really appreciate every single one of you if you enjoyed this video which i hope you did please don't forget to give the thumbs up share it subscribe to my channel if you haven't already turn on notifications so you don't miss future videos follow me on social media if you would like all of those links will be in the info box below and i hope you're having a wonderful day i will see you very soon in my next video bye